our next guest gonna clip. So basically, let me just uh, in case people got on the show uh, later earlier, I played. Basically, there was a um, where is it the two K two ULES ones, which seemingly weirdly the negative story of for the ULES person has been reported. Not seen actually the one of this, but this is the story. Uh, yesterday in court uh, of this, so let's just uh, play this and then we'll get on our guest then who will explain further. A big thank you first of all to Heather. What a brilliant victory today we had. This The person that ran over Heather in Buckhurst Lane, I hope we got that one. Buckhurst Road, was found guilty. Guilty and in terms of the court they said not only was Heather's evidence credible but it was compelling in terms of what in terms of the guilty verdict so now tfl come clean and actually sort out some compensation for heather who was out of work for six six weeks because of one of your operatives who was acting basically out of all control possible not only that we found out today that they already had six penalty points on his license so we we'll look forward to the sentencing hearing where Heather will be putting forward an, uh, an impact, a uh, victim impact statement to express her concern that he's out of the mouth on the boat. He's still driving today as a menace, and that is disgraceful. So TFL, pay up, sort out Heather. And also, uh, we've got Claire here, who was, a, was going to be a witness. Sadly, because he didn't turn up, we, could, uh, we only had a course a foreshortened uh, uh, trial, but all I can say is Claire has some fantastic evidence to offer about six mile chase to try and stop the guy getting away. He not only hit Heather and ran away, but he tried to flee the scene and for six miles he was hoping to escape onto the M25 and get out of the area completely. But thanks, it has to be said to Claire for stopping him in his tracks. What a fantastic job that she did and I'm really sorry that Heather's had to go through all this, through all the pain and agony that she still feels to this day from this idiot, and that's what he is, an idiot who's been going around uh, driving as a menace on our roads. Thank you very much. So that was, uh, obviously there's just an next bit there with Claire there, but uh, this is our guest uh, councillor, uh, I believe Conservative councillor, Simon. Uh, welcome to the show, how are you? Hi, Sean. I'm good. Thank you very much. How are you? Yes. I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I was just, obviously we've met before. I don't know if you remember me. I've, I've we had various yeah, absolutely. You let's, you let's you, you've got one of those faces for crime watch, as I say. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, as have and, I, by the way, as have I. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was just going to say it, it's quite strange, really, because I, I can't find any news stories about this case. But I can find news cases about the other ULES related uh, uh, story about the chap who was basically given a suspended sentence because he was having, like, he was using his flat as a, a hub essentially for what seems yeah. like Blade Runner sort of activity. But there's no stories about this. So, w w why is that? What's going on? What, well, that's what's the happened? mainstream media for you, isn't it, really? Um, they are only interested in their narrative, their story, and they. And sadly, for many people, they have to get their news, the real news through Twitter or through some other um, uh, online uh, method, because frankly, the mainstream is just such such letting people down these days, which is a great shame. Um, you know, um, it's not through want of trying. I even had the, the, the dreaded BBC contact me about it, but they didn't turn up. So, you know, all you can say is, not through want of trying on our part to try and get that story out there. Um, so thank you for picking it up is what I must say and for covering this this type of story. It's absolutely brilliant. So, but just before we go into this, do you just want to like briefly introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, Simon? so I'm Simon Vorthrop. I'm a councillor in, in Bromley. And as you know, Bromley is probably the, the most anti ulez place in the whole of London, really. Um, residents to this day, you probably don't know this, but residents to this day are still fighting it. And again, that's not in the mainstream media. Every single day, there are residents across Bromley and actually the whole of outer London, to be fair, who 
when they when they hear about a, a camera being put up, because if Ulez was so successful, why is Khan determined to put up yet more cameras, yet more infrastructure? It's such a rip roaring success, isn't it? Um, so he has to then um, apply to put up a camera and get uh, and get a license effectively to do it, uh, or a permit, a license, whatever you want to call it. And when he does that, he has to publish it. The permit has to be published. So these residents, being very savvy, have cottoned on to it. They look for when the permit's been issued, when they're going to come. And when they these people come along to try and install a, a ULES camera, well, lo and behold, they're confronted by some residents who are just standing there protesting. Of course, they have no right to move them out of the way. So inevitably, these extra cameras disappear and, and they've not installed on that particular day. But then they'll apply to do it on another day and another day. So... All of these people going across Bromley, Bexley, generally out of London, doing this fantastic work. It's, it's absolutely amazing. So, yeah, that's just to give you a flavour of how reviled I think ULES is in parts of outer London, because particularly in the rural areas where, where you've got people possibly with less money than you might have um, in some of the more central areas where there's no public transport, they rely on their cars. And just to give you an example, my next door neighbour, but but one, she uh, was um, having physiotherapy every, every single week, and it was costing her twelve pound fifty. An old lady, pensioner, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and she was being charged twelve pound fifty a day. Uh, so every time she went to that that appointment, and this is the sort of thing that we're confronting, which is why it's so reviled and hated around here. I mean. And she couldn't get any money off the scrappage scheme. Eventually, eventually, she had to get rid of her car and get something else. But it's, it, you know, but of course now she's even more penniless than she was before. So, you know, it's that's the sort of thing that's been happening time after time, and it's still continuing. And as I say, if you go to somewhere like um, Biggin Hill, basically Biggin Hill is a ULES free zone uh, because because the residents there are determined to keep it free. And they do any to any time as a permit, they're they're blocking it. So anyway, let's put it in context. But way back in this time last year, what you actually had was because Khan hadn't rolled out his camera network, he'd hired these ULES vans with cameras on them, camera vans to go round and snoop on people and try and catch people like out and hide round corners to see if they could get you know a number plate and charge someone twelve pound fifty, but again, uh, these fantastic people because they are uh, not breaking any laws. They get a placard and they'd hold the placard in front of the camera. So therefore, effectively, the van became worthless. It was it was absolutely worthless, and and on that's how this incident started because uh, on that particular occasion there was a group of residents blocking a van. And uh, eventually the van went, went away. But it, with the van comes a, another car full of security guys, because apparently, you know, these are all thugs, these pensioners, are all thugs about to go and, you know, riot and do, do whatever else it is. So, lo and behold, on this particular occasion, um, the, 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 car, the van dis disappeared, but the, the, the security car behind it um, then sort of came forward and actually deliberately ran into Heather, who you saw briefly on that film there. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, this was just in front of the guy. She's probably about a, a metre, uh, a metre and a half, two metres away from the car. And it ran into her. She collapsed onto the bonnet with her... With her is, is, is there any footage of that, Simon? Is there any... There, there, is, there is somewhere. Um, I will see if I can get it sent to you at some stage, because you might be interested in that. Yes, um, it, it's out there in, in social media land somewhere. So I, I'll, I can see if I can get that sent to you. But yeah, interestingly, I'm, I'm just going to have a look for it whilst you're, whilst, whilst in, you're interestingly, speaking. Yeah. Uh, um, and then, having sort of knocked her, she then tried to get away and move to the side. And as she was going to the side, the car zoomed off and hit her again. So she got a double whammy from... Um, what was a, a ULES security guard? And now, what, what 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 speed? I mean, what, I, I assume it well, wasn't like I'm not, not that. I'm no, it's not players, seventy but... miles an hour, but obviously, and and I think the first one would have been you know below ten miles an hour. But even so, ramming into someone even at a small speed uh, when they're not expecting it, they're in front of you. 
she's not she's an old person she's not very mobile and they got her and then as she tried to get out of the way they got her again so you know as you can imagine she's been in a lot of agony for a long time and you know the least that khan could do these days is actually to apologize to her because ultimately he's the man at the top of tfl as the organization he's the chairman he should publicly apologize instead of jetting off to new york wow that, so, so what what so what's happened then with the uh with so the, i'm just looking at here yeah ufl security contractor found guilty or careless driving yeah, uh, bear in mind, this would have been about, uh, I think it was around about November last year. The 12th of November was when the original incident was. So you might have some stills from that. You can see some of the boozing and things that Heather, Heather suffered. Um, but what you can't, won't see, you might not easily find it, is the, the video. But it was put online at the time. But I can get that sent to you later. Um, I don't have it to hand at the moment. Yeah, because I only because I only heard about it literally last night, as in the verdict, and then I was just trying to find I was trying I was trying to find news articles about it. I just could I just couldn't find, but you know I just couldn't find any. Um, well, interestingly, at the time it was it was picked up by ITV, it was picked up by GB News, and I think it was picked up by Talk TV at the time because obviously it was at the at the height of the Eulers coming in and all the rest of it. So the media. The mainstream media were still interested in, in it to some extent, but they weren't interested in the follow-up, which is a bit dis disgraceful, really. Having reported on it in the first place, you'd have thought they'd report on the follow-up. So, obviously, this has been going on. How long has the uh, the ULA, ULA expansion occurred? What was it, last summer? Not yeah, the summer, just gone, in, but the one before. Basically, the end of October, sorry, the end of, of August, the beginning of September, uh, in last year, 2023. So it's been going just over a year now. Okay. So, obviously, uh, you're quite. I do obviously notice that you've been at these uh, at, the, at these protests, etc. What is actually, in your opinion, what is the solution to this? Because from what I've been seeing, I'm not trying to. Um, uh, I'm not trying to upset people. I'm not trying to. Uh, you know, trying to cause demoralization or anything but to me especially as a person who is very much against the ULEs because I don't think that you know I personally think this isn't really about environmental issues I don't think it well, even warrants that I think, I think ultimately this is just about controlling the populace I think I think it's about taking away your motors I think it's about that, that the, the state doesn't like that you can just hop into a car and go anywhere in the country that you want I think there's very much the, the whole civil servants the, the etc all of the state kind of personnel they're, they're basically just giant control freaks they just want to control every aspect of your life that, but that's what? exactly right if i can just interject you yeah. know, cars represent freedom you know, simple as that yeah. they represent personal freedom to go to where you want when you want and and be yourself you don't have to rely on anybody else you don't have to rely on the state and of course there are many people who actually expect you know the individual to rely on the state they want you dependent on the state they want you to be a slave to the state almost and so it's modern day slavery actually in fact someone should take them to court under the modern day slavery act because that's effectively what it is trying to make the slate the state the master and you know the individuals all the slaves so um, and, and that point might sound a bit radical, but that's how it feels because the freedoms are taken away bit by bit by bit. And to that extent, I agree with you. Um, it is, is what's the solution? Ultimately, yeah. unless, you know, and I've, I've never advocated this because I think, you know, people rioting and doing all those sort of things, you know, unless you get, you know, uh, unless you're going to get 10 million people coming out onto the streets to demonstrate which is more than the labor party got votes then you know there's no it's nothing's going to happen and even then it would have to be peaceful because otherwise what you see in riots and all the other things is people get hurt businesses get hurt and that's definitely not not the right way to do go about uh, changing things i've always believed in democratic change but it's not necessarily even about the party sometimes 
It's about the individual and what that individual stands for, even within the party political system. And if you can get the right people elected, then then you get the right result. That, does that make sense? Well, I don't know if you you probably heard. So I saw you were in the waiting room. I, yeah. I'm not a big. Uh, I, I personally don't think. Obviously, you will have a different opinion as as being a, an elected councillor, but I generally don't think that really you can vote your way out of this. I think that personally you do have to take a direct action and that direct action to me is just simply you don't pay the ULES. Like, well, that, there's a lot. There's some people, and I, I doubt that you're one of them, who think that cutting down cameras is the, is the way and, and causing criminal damage, etc., is the is the way to go. I, I think that's basically counterproductive. I think that it's actually making things worse. Well, I, I, I've, I certainly never supported that that course of action because actually, ultimately, we as taxpayers pay for those that equipment, yeah. and you know, vandalizing. It's a bit like vandalizing your own television or something. You wouldn't do it. Um, it just doesn't make sense. However, you know, I do I do understand the frustration of people, particularly when they see that you know the cameras are destroying their livelihoods, the cameras are destroying their freedoms. Uh, I, I get that, but I still think they're wrong, wrong to do it. In terms of, um, you know, direct action or not paying, well, funny enough, there's about, I can't remember what it is, it's over a quarter of a billion pounds of unpaid ULES penalties. Yes. You know, a quarter of a billion. So that says something in itself. Now, some of that, there's always a lag, so that, you know, a fine is issued today, and you know 28 days pass and not everybody's uh, paid it but in 28 days some of it will be paid etc cetera, etc cetera. so you've got to be careful on the facts and figures but it's a lot of money you know um quarter of a billion pounds you know quarter of a billion pounds that is not paid so uh, i think that there's an element of that. and what you've got to remember is anywhere between 10 and 20 percent of that is down to foreign registered vehicles that is cars that are not registered in this country that can get away with it because you can't chase them ultimately you can send a penalty off to belgium or france or wherever but frankly it's not going to get paid is it and what you're going to do i, I actually i actually yet. do know i yeah i actually can confirm that because i i went to canada and i rented out a, a vehicle and i got a you know the equivalent of a pcn whatever it was and they were asking me for money, and I just laughed and threw it, thrown it, threw it in the bin. There, there, there's nothing they can do about it once no. once you're back in your your your, your yeah, natural. Country. I mean, I suppose if you come over again, they can. But you know, by the time you come over again, you might have a different car, different registration, and it all starts again. So you know, it's it's it you know, it's bonkers, and the, you know, the whole thing is bonkers. You know, if you've got a classic car, you know, a massive gas guzzling classic car then you're entitled to go and drive that as much as you like. And and there are people I know that because they've got to pay their £12.50, whereas before they would have just done a short journey and it wouldn't have been very polluting, now they try and do everything in that £12.50 day. So they yeah. zoom around doing lots and lots and lots of stuff. You I, know? And, it's, I, and, I, it's, and it's so counterproductive. Yeah, I, I hear rumour that, that, that... That's all right. I hear rumour that it's going to increase as well uh the uh, you take because obviously i've been out of the ulez loop for a little bit i used to be more active in the ulez stuff but i've just fallen fallen away from it um it what's the update with this pay per mile and increasing of the ulez payment is that is that is there been any well there's nothing to to stop him actually well there's nothing to stop him increasing the charges Oh, I haven't made enough money. Oh, my budget d- gap is worse. Yeah, so I'm going to increase that. the charge from £12.50 to 15 quid. You know, uh, that will be coming at some stage because he won't be making enough money. Then we're going to get oh, extra cameras. Why, are the, why is he still putting up all these extra cameras? There's only one answer to that, paper mile. And, and that really is a breach of people's freedoms it's monitoring everywhere you go forget the charges but way back i did a calculation the average car um does about i can't remember what it was two miles a day that's driving in london the average car this is the car does two miles a day or something that's the average because people in outer london 
to far greater mileage. And so to get that, that it worked out at roughly two pounds per mile. Two pounds per mile. And imagine you're doing 10 miles, 20 quid. You know, I mean, it's just mad. Okay. And what, what can people... I mean, what, what is the, what's the future for two things? One, in a sort of more uh, micro level, what they, where do you see the ULEZ or what, what in terms of the campaigning and stuff? What do you see going with that? And two, what is in terms of on a national level? <laughs> I mean, do, do you do, uh, obviously? I know, you see, you, I, know well, I know, obviously, you're on you're on a live feed here. I'm, and, I'm well keen into what the, what national, is the future national of the thing, as you can tell. Party? So, so, so sorry, repeat that again, Sean. I missed it. So what I'm saying is, is that where, because obviously a lot of people have. Now I, I don't. I'm not a voter at all, personally. I just, it, to me, I don't think that is the solution to. I don't think you can vote your way out of this. I don't think there's a political solution with what. Not not the ULA I'm talking about in the just as well as the ULA. There's many other things that is going on in this country right now. I think we're coming. We're very slowly becoming a high, high authority high authoritarian, tyrannical state at the moment with in, not just in terms of, well, you're seeing what's happening with Starmer ever since since he's got in power with 2000, the rest that the state has made, calling them all criminals on the official home office Twitter account before they've even stepped into into the courtroom, you know, therefore biasing the sort. I, I do think that there is two tier justice. I mean, what I mean, what do you what do you first see with the with the ULEZ campaign? And what, where do you see this country going in, say, five years' time, let's say? Oh, all right. Let me put my Mystic Meg hat on now. First of all, the ULES campaign. Actually, it's already been proven. I don't know if I've told you this already, but we had a report to Bromley Environment Committee recently that said, oh, let's have a look at the air quality data. And it said definitely no conclusion that ULES has made any difference whatsoever. That was a report to our committee, and well, it's not a surprise to those of us that that knew well, about this sort of thing. But Simon, sorry to interrupt. What do they actually listen to that though? Because I think that there is a world agenda going on. You're oh. getting all of these count local councils in all sorts of countries, and they're all coming up with coincidentally the same idea as everywhere of these 15 minute neighbourhoods yeah. and these you know whatever where the smart cities, whatever you want to call yeah. them. Yeah, we, we got. They, to they, 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 I don't think they really want to listen to this, Simon. They don't really. They've got this agenda. They want to put this in full force, and they're not interested in what reports are being given. I mean, anyone can pay any scientist to write any kind of report. As long as the money's good, they can just incentivize them to say whatever, can't they? So what what I, makes I, you think that I those reports are actually going to do anything? I don't disagree with that. I mean, our report, um, you, you know, was written independently, so you, you could say that. But we are also a little more... Um, on the ball to make sure that things are reported fairly so there is that element to it and that's the thing that local people can do going back to it um in terms of the future you know i think everything has to be reviewed you know and and i hope that any future candidate for mayor will say look actually i can't say what's going to happen because frankly you know the ulis was only introduced for money and if you can show that it's actually not valid it's not really financially viable then you might want to get rid of it all um, and also if it's done its job as mr khan claims it has then why do we need it simple as that you know <laughs> and so, you see I, I i don't think simon that it really is for money i think oh, i think if it does make a bit of money then fine but i think ultimately that it's like i said earlier it's really about control i don't think they really care about how much money it costs because at the end of the day they can just raise taxes or even more simpler they can just print money which we saw during the whole covid era where they yeah. printed billions and billions and yeah. billions of pounds and this is the real reason why we have why things are going up you know costs of services and costs of products are going up it's because we, we i mean what we we're, we're at least three trillion pounds in debt now that they're willing to tell you uh, tell us about. That's not even including the pensions. So uh, all the you know, stuff off the books, yeah. So that's what I mean. They have an unlimited printing machine. You know, this counterfeiting of money that we call what is it? Um, Quantitative easing. easing. <laughs> it, well, I, I I generally don't think they care about whether it makes money or not. I think ultimately, again, it's as conspiratorial as this may may sound to you. I think it, it is 
generally about controlling the masses, controlling people. So well, that, again, I, I, again, if you, if you produce this report and say, "Oh, it isn't financially, you know, viable," it's just they won't, they don't care. Like ultimately, I think it's yeah, just. But I think I think the person in, in charge can ultimately care and change that. And as I said, politics is the art of the possible, and and you've got to say to people, no, actually, everything's up for review if you're if you're doing it because some of these things, you know, low traffic neighbourhoods, etc. Um, they actually cause just as many problems as they might theoretically solve. And so, you know, to my mind, it, 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 that's the way, that's the future. It's about reviewing it. And I actually believe that if you can be positive to people and explain that actually, you know, you have a vision that's just positive and that actually you want to unburden people from the state, that actually things like 15-minute cities and all the rest of it are sort of irrelevant and the war on the motorist is real, and that that's got to be tackled, then actually, you know, ultimately people will respond and people always respond to a positive message. You know, I could be doomy and gloomy about it and say, oh, woe is me, Khan is is terrible, which is all true. But the fact is people are more likely to respond to something positive that's going to make them feel good, that make them feel positive. And that's where too many of our opposition MPs of all parties tend to be oh this is really really bad actually forget criticizing them tell people the positive things that you're going to do and that way people will respond that's that's my view i think you know and i would encourage people to do that but we can only do it through democratic change otherwise as you say these things become entrenched the longer they're there the more entrenched they become the worse it is for people they you then not only get the the police and, and everybody enforcing fines and bailiffs and all the rest of it and court orders and etc cetera, etc cetera. and it just get escalates and escalates so that the, as i said to you earlier the state is in control of everything it's all about the state enslaving you okay simon well thank you for coming on unn um and discussing some of those things and having we have we're pontificating about <laughs> pointless subjects possibly who knows but uh but we'll um, we'll leave it at that anyway. But thank you for coming on, mate. Thank you for That's... giving an update on the on Heather Watts and her situation as well. Because yeah. I I, I, obviously, I, I, I was just trying. There probably is stories out there, but perhaps I'm typing in you, Les, whatever, blah blah blah, and it's just coming yeah. up with all sorts of stories. It's lost in the I'll, I'll in the see chaos what I can find. of it. Uh, yes, see you what... can. Yeah, you, I mean, no obligation. I'm just you know, but. Uh, let me know but more importantly, yeah. there's another ULES case coming up at Westminster oh, in November, and this yeah. is the the tooting, the, the tooting five four, now down to the five. tooting four, which yes, I think yeah. you've heard about as well. So, yes, I've heard about that. and yes. again, I'm the spokesman for those those folk as well. So happy to uh, give you an update on that one when it comes. Yes, yes, yeah, do come on again. What what is just can you give us just a synopsis, brief synopsis on it, though, what, and when the court case is? I can't remember the date. I'd have to go and look it up because my diary gets busy and I have to have to look it up. But essentially, um, a, a whole bunch of people um, were down in Tooting um, and they were protesting against the ULA's expansion. It was during the, the run-up to the May election, so it was in April, and they were protesting... And then the um, police materialised um, and arrested five people originally. Now down to four. They were accused of, you know, trying to intimidate Sadiq Khan. Well, as you can imagine, those um, individuals said, well, what evidence have you got for this? And why doesn't Mr Khan come as a witness? So we wait to see if Khan is a witness in this case or not. I suspect he won't be. No, and given, be given, given the situation, hopefully the case, the charges will all be dropped. And I say that because, you know, the the court gave, and this is no big secret, the court gave um, um, a duty on the, uh, the Crown Prosecution Service to provide their disclosure by the 6th of September. And to date, they haven't even bothered to do that. So they... They haven't disclosed the so-called case against them. And it's interesting because in court, they were going, oh, we interviewed them under caution and, and and all the rest of it. Well, none of them were interviewed. You know, So there's a whole range of things that are fundamentally wrong. 
and you know hopefully that will be kicked out but if not we look forward to to the case and being able to present evidence to prove that you know these people were not intimidating uh Khan. in fact he was he was it wasn't even anywhere near although his house was on the on the on that road um he was elsewhere so how could they have intimidated him they haven't said he's intimidating anybody else i'm probably giving too much away but that's basically the position at the moment. So, and who who are these for? Is there is 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 it kind of well known people in the ULES movement? Or yeah. So, for example, Nicola is one of them. You might yeah, know Nick. He's been on the show before. Yeah. Yeah. So you got you got Nick, you've got Ali, you've got Lloyd, and you have got Martin Martin Whitehead. So those four. I think I um, know. Yeah. I yeah, I, I mean, two of them yeah, anyway. and I can yeah. send you information on that as well. Oh, I, yeah, I'll find that. I, I, I've already read it, but I just forget because it was what it was a bit of a while ago. I think was that the was that the one where someone left a caravan outside? No, um, no, that's a, that's another issue. No, nobody was charged for that one. Um, they even left, you know, bless them. They even left a speedboat outside Keir Starmer's house <laughs> with no to you less on it. The, you know, some of the some of the some of the things that they, they get up to are, are fantastic and they did the carnaloo of course as well um and all that sort of stuff so so yeah there's some some hijinks going on um all in good humor and all legal that's the great thing about them they've been doing all the, the right sort of legal things oh, and, when when, and when rough on. when roughly is that case the two in four one when, when um, probably... it's in november sometime november. i can't i just i've got okay. the date in the top of my head because no, sure we we i think you know actual coverage he's in the chat now so he'd probably be going to that i would imagine uh sir roger's name is uh he might be going to that i imagine to report on it he usually got a live stream uh camera um okay okay cool well uh, uh simon thank you for coming on the show we've been uh it's been good chatting with you um on certain topics but i'm gonna let you go and hopefully you can come on again we'll have a more more of a conversation yeah Cheers, Sean, and thank you very much for having me. And I will look forward to that, particularly, probably, if not before, maybe in November when we've heard from the ULES case. Okay, thank you, man. Take care, yeah, and have a good night. And you. Take care. Take care. Take care. Have, and Cheers, you too. too. Cheers. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye. Guys, that was Councillor Simon. Uh, is it a fourth rope? I think I've actually, I've actually asked him to uh, for that. But uh, that was, he's obviously been at many ULES, uh, ULES events, he's usually there. You know, I know obviously people are asking a lot of questions there in the chat, but, uh, you know, we've only got so much time to fit in all of those sort of questions. Maybe, you know, obviously in the future we'll, yeah, we're trying to keep on topic as much as possible. But it's always interesting getting a, you know, especially from one of the big parties and hearing their, hearing their, uh, their, their views on certain subjects. But anyway, guys, I'm going to... I'm going to head off because obviously it's been way past my bedtime. It's half an hour over, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, guys, I'm going to head off. Um, I don't know who's the, who's, who's the, wow, 400, uh, 400 lemons on D live from, is it the con? Can't even say it. That, that name basically. Um, if they want to get in their song request, we're going to head off. Thank you guys for watching. David Clues is back tomorrow. The Emperor, he's back tomorrow on the show. Since then, I'll tell you what, until uh, that individual was choosing their song request, once there is, I will just go through some what what David has been putting up on the UNN, uh, UNN accounts. And I'm going to head off after this. 